Hi, in this video I have a 7 Series BMW. I'm here in the front. Here is the front strut. Notice there's a wire coming out of the strut. So here is the front strut. And on this car it is fitted with something called EDC, which is electronic dampening control. You can adjust the shock absorbers dampening dynamically from a control unit in the car based on steering angle, acceleration, speed, and things like that. So that means that the shock has multiple personalities, and that is a really cool feature. However, it is quite an expensive item to replace if it is faulty. Now, how you know you have that? Well, you'll have the wire coming out of the strut. And here you can see if I've opened the lid, there is the wire coming out from the top of the strut. So here's a replacement strut for this exact car. And this strut can be used on this car even though this car has EDC and there is a way to override that and I have a video explaining how to delete or blank out the electronic dampening control so you can put on the cheaper shocks because obviously these uh, ones that are electronic are about four times the price. Right, so the point of this video is that I noticed that my dampening or my ride was not as great as it used to be. These uh, struts and rear shocks have done over 200,000 kilometers. They've done 223,000 kilometers and I wanted to test them. So I took the vehicle to a dedicated shock testing machine which the car drives on and the car actually vibrates. That's not just uh, simply depressing the car, it actually vibrates the front wheels and then the back wheels are then assessed as well. And then it gives you a printout. Now I'm going to show you the printout and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that and some of the challenges that I have found. Now the first thing I want to bring to your attention is on this car I can set the dampening to sport mode which gives it a firmer ride or I can set it to comfortable, which is uh, self-explanatory. There's the option. I can choose sports mode. I can change it to comfort. Now, on the newer BMs, you've got even more settings. You've got Sport Plus, etc. And overall, what it does is it just adjusts the shock dampening. So, obviously, the more sportier you want it, the harder or the firmer the shock is. And that is adjusted by a voltage which is fed into the shock. All the shocks are connected to the EDC module. Now, the point of the video is now to show you the responses I got from that shock test. Now, I just want to bring to your attention that these shocks are already worn out. I already knew that there was something wrong. I just wanted to take a measurement. Right, so let's have a look at the shock test results and then you can see why I have these replacement shocks ready because obviously my shocks are no longer in good working order. Right, so here is the test and I'll quickly explain it. They've got a key here which says pass is more than 0.25 and then subjective is between 0.2 2.25 or less than and equal to and then fail is if it is less than 0.2 and what they're talking about is they vibrate the wheel and then they plot it and then here you can see it says hertz because this is the frequency of the vibration the floor underneath the tire bounces up and down at a frequency between 10 and say I think 20 odd and then you can see that that's the response for the one strut and that's the response for the other strut and then on the rear they also have two waveforms because there are two shocks on the rear so there's a little smiley face here so anything above 0.3 would be good or at least minimum that would be the minimum and that would be a pass and then 0.2 is the cutoff anything less than 0.2 it's a fail and they're saying this area here between these two lines is subjective now i already knew there was something wrong with my shocks because i already said that the road holding wasn't as great so having a look at what they found they said front left possible replacement front right possible rear right possible but rear left no because look it got to 0.3 so there's the individual results front left 0.23 front right 0.25 and then a rear right 0.28 so we can see that only the one shock actually passed the test and uh, I would have to replace all three but obviously you cannot just replace one shock you have to replace two at a time they have to be matched so in this case I would need to replace four of the uh, dampers now what I'd need to do here is I would now need to say 
is this like this in comfort mode or sport mode or does that have any impact now that is why this is test number one so what i did do is i went and did the test again here it is number two and what i did is i put the vehicle in sport mode for test two so test two was sport and test one was comfort now there's a little problem with this the first thing is does it make a difference when the car is stationary you see this is a stationary shock test now obviously the driver when they drive the vehicle that is the best test because you know your vehicle you can feel it nosedive when you brake you can go around the bend you can feel the bumps you know if the shocks are weak and in my case i know that and this is why i wanted to get a quantitative test to actually see what are the values is it time to replace and i'm going to quickly show you something now here are the replacement units for this car now if you go for the sax unit there you can see this is just the basic shock without the electronic control it's 222 dollars now say you go for the b4 that's the one i just showed in the earlier part of the video that's the same strut there you can see and notice it says without adaptive drive so it means there's also no electronic dampening control there's the price 173 but if i have to replace it with the strut that's already there remember mine is the wire it's got the edc that is the price now that is a significant price to pay if you're not sure if the shock isn't uh, and the strut isn't uh, in good working order because as i said there is a significant difference between the normal version versus the edc enabled version so if you times this by four um, two on the front and then two on the back the back I think are a little bit cheaper but still still expensive now now going back to the report right so now I put it in sport mode and these are the readings you'll notice that it's pretty much the same because look it says possible replace possible replace possible no so the only difference is the front got slightly higher look this was 0.24 and this is 0.26 and i'll show you over there this was 0.23 and 0.25 now maybe i could have done the uh, test one again and it may have also got 0 0.24 0 0.26 i don't know the accuracy of the machine now the reason why there is pretty much no difference between these two tests is because the car was stationary and the edc only engages at five kilometers an hour now what happens is when you disable your edc the shock automatically goes into its firmest position so in this case the car is stationary and the edc module was still a functional but it's even though it was in sport mode it was actually still in comfort mode for the reason that the car was stationary so if you look at the rear 0.3 when the car was set to sport and 0.28 when the car is set to sport that's for the rear and look at the comfort mode setting it's the same 0 0.3 0 0.28 so basically it didn't make a difference so then i realized that there must be a mistake i'm making and then i realized that this is actually quite a difficult shock to test because you need to test it under dynamic conditions and that would be when the steering is moved and there's probably an accelerometer and so basically when you're driving okay so let me continue with the story now right now what i did is i redid the test but i actually unplugged the shock so i went over here and there's a connector here and i opened it like this and when you unplug it the edc goes into a fail safe mode and what it does is all the shocks go to full firmness what i mean by that is there is a voltage here that is present only when the car is on and the edc is enabled the minute one of these are unplugged the edc switches off so all the shocks are actually now off and the shock itself is in its firmest position when there is no voltage applied so now i redid the test and here are the results right so this is test number three this is about two weeks later now just to recap in case i've lost you now test one and test two was under normal conditions i didn't fiddle with the computer i just literally drove in and tested the shocks i had the car on comfort mode setting in the dash you know on the uh, infotainment center and then i redid the test on the exact same day and then and all I did is I toggled the setting, the EDC, 
to sport mode and as I said it made no difference because this was a static test meaning the car was not moving only the wheels were bounced up and down but the wheels were not turning and then I realized that the EDC would not change the shocks characteristics or dampening because the car was not moving so therefore I forced it now I unplugged the shock and by unplugging it you force the shock into its firmest position and here are the results now just a disclaimer don't worry about this wheel what had happened is in between these tests look this was on the 16th of March and this one here was as I said about two weeks later so the 28th of March my shock actually uh, spilt oil out of it it probably uh, popped one of the seals and I even found oil next to the tire on the inside that is how much oil probably two tablespoons of oil so this not only reflects the final test but it also reflects a shock which has changed its properties because it lost some oil and keep that in mind because that might uh, be interesting to see that it was actually still higher so let's look at the results the test result now was 0.26 for the front left and 0.27 but remember I've lost about two tablespoons of oil there now if I go back to the best of the first two tests it was 0.24 and 0.26 so now when the shock was in its firmest position notice that it is actually a fair amount better in terms of its test because it was 0.24 and 0.23 and now it is 0.26 so that is different now let's look at the rear the rear was 0.3 and 0.28 and now when the shock was in its firmest position it's 0.33 and 0.32 notice look at that we have a status change before when I hadn't uh, fiddled with the shock wire and I just ran it normally you can see that the test said no and possible and now it went to no and no notice that this increased to 0.33 and 0.32 and before when the shock was plugged in it was 0.3 and 0.28 so yes it actually made a difference and is the difference significant well you can have a look at the graph these are the graphs for the test when I have not fiddled with the EDC yes I put it in sport mode but it didn't make a difference so that's what it looked like just have a look at that and have a look at that and now when I unplug the shock defaulting all the shocks to their firmest position look at that and this improved too but just keeping in mind that that front right shock has actually lost some oil and even having lost probably two tablespoons of oil it also increased from 0.26 to 0.27 so this shows me that when you are testing your shocks if you've got the EDC enabled in your car and you have the electronic type shocks Doing a shock test is quite challenging and also just be aware that the EDC will only work when the car is in motion. I can't speak for all BMWs but the BM that I've tested and the literature I've read uh, shows that it engages when the car is in motion and that's a logical because you want it as comfortable as possible when you're going slowly and then as you speed up and go around the bends and your steering angle turns and the forces in the car change it tells the computer the car is going fast and maybe it can firm up the shocks so therefore if you are doing a shock test just be aware of this and lastly if you are going to be testing your shocks visually inspect them check if there's any oil around the shock if it's just a tiny bit of sweating that's fine but if you see actual a line of oil dripping down the shock the shock is done you have to change it so I will be changing my shock look out for some videos on how I go about that repair right so you're probably wondering what's it like if you drive without the EDC enabled and does it make such a big difference and the answer to that is it makes a huge difference let me put it like this it's like night and day now when I've disabled this or if I've recoded the EDC module, uh, it's called EDC Delete, I have a video on it. Um, if you disable it, it's like driving on rocks. Never mind run flat tires, this is now extremely firm for this vehicle. So I know that when I put the replacement shock in, here the strut and the rear shock, it'll be much, much more comfortable than this thing unplugged. 
And even though the shocks are worn, I mean 223,000 Ks, you can do this yourself. You can have the car on and bounce it up and down and then switch it off, but make sure it's been off for a little while and then bounce it up and down and then see if there's a difference. If you're not getting a difference, you can also unplug it, but you might get errors on your dash which you might need to clear. Okay, so there's my two cents worth on this topic and thanks for